Thanks for joining. This is Movado, and I'm back here with another video in PAL World. Today's episode is going to focus all on attack power and how to maximize the attack that you get either out of your your person through your personal weapons, or uh, if you prefer to use your PAL's abilities, I'll also talk a little bit about that because the things that I'll, I'll go over today kind of apply a little bit to both. So to get started, probably one of the first things you'll see once you get into the game are going to be your stats, your stat points, kind of down here in the bottom right. Every time you gain a level, I'm level 50, but every time you gain a level, you're going to get a stat point. As you progress, you're probably going to want to mix up where you put those stat points, but once you get to the end game, um, I ended up respecking, kind of resetting all these stats. I put almost everything into attack, with the exception of weight. I think I put 10 points into weight, 39 points into attack, and that was kind of that was it. So that's kind of why attack, part of the reason why attack is so high. But as you go through, make sure you get those stat points. Uh, also, one thing to good to know about is within this electric medical bench, you can create this memory wiping medicine, and, and I did that once I got to my end game. Completely wipes your stat points, so you can reset them to be attack heavy. So just something good to know there. But focus on the attack, wipe it if you can. Um, on top of that, inside your inventory, you also have these accessory slots. In the attack pendant plus two, I've got an attack pendant plus one. There's also an attack pendant itself. So there's three different versions. You'll find that with all the different pendants, the jewelries you find. Typically, that jewelry is found within the dungeons themselves and random chests, but I think you can find them other other places as well. Uh, if we look at our attack power, it says passive skills plus 135%. If I take this pendant off, if it stays off, now my passive skill is plus 120%. So that means that every level of the attack pendant adds 5%. So if I put this one back on, my passive is now plus 135. If I take off my thermal undershirt and I put a second one on because they do stack, my passive is now plus 150. Uh, if I put this plus one on, my passive is now plus 145. So each level gives you that 5% boost uh, and you can stack them on top like that. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind as you are getting ready for some battles is going to be the passives, the elements... Um, there's a lot of helpful guides online in terms of showing you which elements are weak to other elements. Like, for example, fire is strong against grass and ice. Water is good against fire. You know, electricity is good against water, blah, blah, blah. Take a look at the online resources. Get familiar with those because those are going to be super helpful as you enter fights. For example, I'm here out in the mountains next to Jet Dragon. If you fight Jet Dragon, know that he is a dragon, and dragons are weak to ice. So you want to bring an ice element, ice pal with you uh, as well. So there's that. Now, next thing to keep in mind is as we're talking about that, within the pals themselves, uh, I have Frost Stallion here. And then, so keep in mind what they say. This changes the player's attack type to ice and enhances ice attacks while mounted. The key thing is it attack, changes your attack type to ice. So while you're riding Frost Stallion or while you're riding Frost Stallion Knocked, or there's other ones that change the damage that you personally do, keep an eye on that because that's a way for you, if you like to shoot your guns, use rocket launchers, whatever, that's a way for you to maximize the weaknesses and the enemies that you're going to face. So if I ride Frost Stallion, I go down to sh fire to shoot uh, Jet Dragon, all of my shots are now ice attacks and they get that multiplier because it's a weakness to him. So uh, that's a really good thing to keep in mind right there. Um, next thing to keep in mind is going to be your pals. And I'm going to grab, going to grab a couple foxicles here. And we'll look at the differences between these foxicles that I have as well as these gobfins. So pals, when you look at your whole team, you know, some people will try to put the five best pals out there that are all individual. They all do different elements and they take them with you. Personally, I prefer to bring pals that boost either me or my main pal and only use that one pal for attack. So what that means is if we look at the gobfin, if you look at his, his partner skill, while in team, it increases the player's attack power. So it just has to be in your team. And if you look back, I had four of them in the team. I only have two. Um, and that stacks. So each Gobfin, just by being in the team, increases your, your attack power. But I think now that he's level five, I think it's 20%. 
uh, or sorry, 10% it, it adds. So I think it's 2% per level. Uh, so being a level 5, he adds 10%. So on top of that, if you get four of them, that's a 40% boost. Then when you start looking at the passives, this Vanguard, Stronghold, Strategist, those further boost your attack and your defense values. So Vanguard, the base attack, is a 10% gain. If you get them up to level 5, that actually doubles to a 20%. So you get 20% boost on Gobfin, plus his boost up here, uh, increases the player's attack power, he's actually doing 30% boost to my damage uh, for every Gobfin that's in the group. And if you had four Gobfins like I had before, I would get a 120% boost, which is what I had before, if you remember seeing when I took the, the jewelry off. Um, on top of that, or aside from that, if you look at some of the pals, some people prefer to uh, use their pals abilities or let their pals do all the work and kind of stand in the background or the side and then kind of do the cleanup work afterwards. And that's okay. That's a strategy. You'll find that there's a lot of pals in the game like Foxicle here that while they're in their team, they increase attack power of ice pals. You'll find that with a lot. You'll find it with fire. You'll find it with dark. I don't think there's a dragon one, but there's a lot of different ones um, that boost your pals as well. So think about your play style, think about the, 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 you know, the pal that you want to bring with you, and then think about how you want to boost them. Personally, me, like I, like I was showing you before, I prefer the Gobfins because I prefer the rocket launchers. Um, and as a quick demo, since we're so close to Jet Dragon, first of all, let's take a look here at where my attack is. So I am a, oh, I forgot one thing, food. Food. I almost forgot about one of the most important things. Actually, food is one thing I uh, I almost forgot about or I just learned about recently. So food, there's a couple different ones that are really helpful. This mozzarella cheeseburger is one of them. It gives you an attack by 20% boost. But if you go into the cooking station, we'll do that right now, there's a second one. There's two of them that give that 20% boost. We talked about the mozzarella cheeseburger. It's down here. It requires two mozzarella meat. The Ikthyr Local Moco is another one requires one Ikthyr Venison. Both of them increase attack by 20%. Uh, again, that stacks with everything else. So, um, you know, whichever one you find is easiest. Either way, you either need Mozzarinas or Ikthyr Venison to do that. Uh, if I go ahead, so I got the double attack pendants. Uh, if I go ahead and use that, now my attack is... 150% passive, 20% for food. I'm up to a 533. Let's head down to... Come back here, Frost Alley. Let's head down to Jet Dragon. Because he is so close here. And I will show you how quickly... Once you start stacking up the damage of maximizing the stat points... Maximizing your pals... Uh, and in order to get your pals to level 5, I didn't say it before, you're going to have to condense. It's 116 pals to get them up to level 5. So in order to get 4 support gobfins, all level 5, uh, what is that, 232, so that's 464 pals you're going to have to breed or whatever just to condense them into the support pals. So it takes a lot of work, takes a lot of time, a lot of cakes. Uh, but gosh, once you get it, it does dwell. So, okay, let's watch this. Let's do that. 3,378 damage. He wasn't even sleeping or surprised. 3,123 damage. 3,086 damage. And he's almost dead. And he's dead. Look at that. Four shots with a rocket launcher. If he were sleeping, I would get even more damage out of all that, and he probably would have been one shot. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for today. That's what I wanted to show you, give you some tips and tricks on how to maximize your damage, show you kind of what I've learned along the way, and um, hope that it helps you out in your adventures. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and hope to see you next time. Thanks, everyone. Take care.